So I'll be talking about model-based safety planning. I'll be talking about people and behavior and some of the things we've been doing in the past and what we look at as the future uh, using safety base. Um, so we spend a lot of our time with people on projects looking at stuff, figuring out how to build stuff better, safer, uh, cheaper, and to a higher quality. And we do that using not this. Sorry, I'll go through it. Uh, using 4D models, so visualizations of programs. Uh, those programs can be very detailed, they can be thousands of activities. The geometry can be very detailed, I'll go on to more detailed examples later. Um, but as an example of what we've been doing, let's say 50 years ago, 60 years ago, we've been working with siloed information, Gantt charts. Uh, Henry Gantt himself died 100 years ago. So it's a, it's a, it's a technology. This is, it's a technology that's arguably 120 years old, and we're still using it to manage risk and time on projects. And this obviously isn't good enough. Taking logistics information, uh, survey information, temporary works, permanent works, and all of the points of view of the supply chain. So most projects have 5, 10, 15, 20, however many parties all interfacing and trying to build stuff. So this isn't good enough. This is, this is better because, um, so if I go back six years, so six, six years of Crossrail, Moorgate Shaft, this was the project, the professional team, including me, this is planner, a uh, few modelers um, and engineers. There's, there's, there's 10 of us in the room for uh, a few weeks coming up with this, the, the scheme for the project, how we're gonna build it. Yeah, we'll, we'll dig, we'll put a ring beam in, we'll dig, we'll put a ring beam in. And then when we down here, we need some props because, of, because the pressures and the structure is going to behave like this. This is how we're going to do it. Um, we were pleased with this. We were very happy. We'd concluded something. We had the visuals. We had a program that we thought was robust. In the cabins on site, we invited in some of the operations team. And Mike, possibly his name isn't Mike. It's changed over the years. But Mike puts his hand up, Bobcat driver, and says, yeah, you can physically put me in there, but I'll be in there for six months. OK, well, let's slow that down a little bit. And can you explain why you're going to be in there for six months? Because I can slew, but I can't really pick up. If I pick up, the bucket's sitting here. Um, and it was that, that point and that moment that we see through projects, and we, we, we see a lot of this, of a professional team building or, or coming up with a plan for the project that then is uh, impacted by the experts in the field. And 4D, by visualizing it, does that. Um, if I skip past some of the deeper analysis that we went, then went and did, uh, we ended up with an improved scheme that didn't <coughs> require the props. So we saved the six months, we saved seven figures, and we ended up with something that was much safer um, in terms of timing, so I'm in. Um, and, and that's what we see a lot of. So if I go through to another project, this is London Underground, uh, 2,500 activities for a crossover upgrade. And this was, this was a piece of work that came out of lots of workshops and, and um, engineering or planning engineering that then went out into the field in terms of inductions. So four hour and eight hour shifts, we're sending 50 operations team, 50 people down into the dark and we could explain very clearly that the engineering train, uh, WB14, is coming up on the up track and expect that train. And there's something about that very simple visual that tells you, for those 15 minute periods, this is what's happening. So I'll, I'll touch on how Safety Base will, will upgrade that. Uh, but that kind of behavior we've been seeing for 10, 15 years. And that, that behavior is fantastic. It improves safety. Um, this is 22 Bishopsgate, complex demolition and rebuild. So this is the, the 4D model of it. Uh, thousands of activities represented. Um, loads of safety features, fire access being a critical one to, to get the operations team up and down. Um, this is a screen record from a workshop. So in this workshop, we had a set of contractors, main contractor, some of the design team, some of the suppliers, and crawler crane drivers who would say, yeah, OK, put me there, put me here, and then when I'm there, the excavator can be around here. And it's, it's very visual. It's like a game environment for a team. And the experts get to plan the project. 
So it's not something that we're doing on the ground. We're doing it six months in advance of the works, and we can plan for that. So we end up with a very detailed scheme, and at the start of each shift, the toolbox talk is like this. It's visual. You'll be there, and tomorrow you'll be there, and expect this the next day. Um, but the trade contractors were doing similar things, very detailed work. So this is from Carey's. Uh, the, the jump form actually did look like this. It was super clean, super clear. Everyone knew their job. Everyone knew their role. And it was something that was developed months before the work. So it was, it was very well planned. Um, PAS 1192 Part 6, 18, um, released last year. Loads of references to 4D modeling, which we were encouraged to see. Fantastic to see that kind of thing, capturing the behavior of the work we've been doing and, and others and contractors have been doing. So there's references to 4D models. I'm, I won't go into the history, and I don't know the history of how Safety Base was created, but there was a large partnership. Um, the way we're seeing Safety Base be used is to change that behavior even further and make it model-based safety planning. So allowing teams to do this kind of thing, very simple three-step process between identifying and then reducing and then communicating residual risks. So by making it model-based, we can involve Mike, the Bobcat, Bobcat driver, at any point in time. And if this, this is possibly the last video. So screen record of me operating it. I'm not an operator. I'm not an expert at these things. But it's as simple as um, navigating around the 4D model, which sits underneath this, and tagging items and marking over the top of that, allowing those items to uh, have an owner, have a residual, uh, have a risk profile, so severity. Uh, again, I won't go into the details of how the database is created, but this is this is model a model and a team behaving in order to create a risk register and database. So, if we could go back six years to Crossrail and have Mike put his hand up again, it would be as literal as being able to do things quicker and faster in the room. We could take out the props. We could place a different size excavator in place. And it's that kind of behavior we're really encouraged to see with solutions like this in the past demo 92 part six. So um, the database looks something like this. It's fantastic for referencing and traceability. Um, and we imagine when we start piloting this on the ground, we'll be getting into a lot of sight line work so we can go and operate plant. I'm not sure how much we'll go next in terms of operation, but, but definitely in terms of accessing models, um, fantastic solution. Um, we're also not sure how we're going to be using the difference engine. So uh, of 3D repost difference engine in terms of checking for updates and changes between uh, stages of work or when the supply chain come on board and they, the, the plan of work is changed or design impact changes to the program, there's a whole whole new world ahead of us uh, in terms of that. So safety, better planning. Uh, and obviously, it's Power BI integrated. So we can, we can show and monitor and dashboard and control the risks across single projects. And I think that's it, which was about 10 minutes. Thank you. Cheers.